Hello, so here we are at uh, Robert Warren School, and uh, my friend Kirsty Gilliland posted, uh, she's the music teacher here, she posted a, um, something on social media saying that her kick bass drum head was broken. So we're going to um, have a look at that and see how we're going to replace it. So the first thing I want to do, I want to make sure that um, um, I can work on the drum. So I'm going to just remove the rack altogether. I just leveled out the drums like that so that I can set them down on the ground and the weight is equalized on them. And then if you want to come in here for just a second, um, the pedal is typically clamped on, and you can usually just loosen whatever it is that's clamping the pedal on with your hand. And now the, uh, the jaw that holds the pedal in place is loose. So I can remove the pedal, and I'm going to hinge these things back so they don't get in my way when I flip the drum over onto its front, which I'm going to be doing in order to work on it. Same with this one here. And... Now we've got this, our sad problemo situation here. So, what we're going to need in order to do this is a measuring tape, a rag, a roll of painter's tape, screwdrivers, I brought one of each, a standard, a Phillips and a Robertson, but it's probably going to be a Phillips that we're going to need, and a drum key. You can use, um, you can use a regular drum key if you want, but uh, this one ends up being just a little bit faster for this process that we're going to do here. So. Step number one, this is um, a useful thing to do when you, um, and anytime you change a head on any drum, even if the drum is, uh, if the drum is metal and the rim is metal, it's good to do it. If the drum is wooden and the rim is metal, it's even more important to do it. But when the drum is wooden and the rim slash hoop is wooden, it's critical that you do this. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a piece of tape here, and I'm gonna put a piece of tape here in order to make absolutely sure that when I put the hoop back on, it's in the same orientation because the drum warps over time, the hoop warps over time, and the hoop will actually warp to fit the drum over time. So I've just got that marker there so that when I put it back on, I'm just going to line them up and put them on. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen here. Loosen everything. With the key, just to the point at which it gets loose enough that I can do the rest of the um, removal of the lug bolts with my fingers. And let's see here. I believe I have one. So now I'm just turning them counterclockwise with my hand and removing them one at a time. Of course, this is the portion of the video where I have to try to come up with something to say because it's kind of time consuming to do. But, uh, listening, 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 listening. And we're almost there. We've only got a couple left to do. set it on something just so that it stays there and I've got my uh, I've got my drum so if you want to come and have a look in here this is a preventative maintenance thing that it's nice to do while you have it apart already anyway and as you can see if you look at these closely these are the um, these are essentially the screws that hold these things in place the things that govern the tension of the head so while we have it apart anyway uh, and since it's the playing side, so it's the side that's under more tension, I'm just going to go around and make sure that these are tight. And they are Phillips. Most of them are pretty tight, but I'm getting about a quarter of a turn. Oh, that one I got a half turn on. So it's good to do this because um, if they loosen too much, and particularly if one of the two screws, or sorry, one of the two screws slash bolts that holds these things in place gets too loose and eventually vibrates out of place and falls out, um, if the tension on the head is pretty high, it can actually eventually tear, uh, uh, tear the bolt, the remaining bolt, right through the shell of the drum and then you have a much larger problem. So I'm just going to make sure that those are all tight and good to go and now we're ready to put on our new head. Um, do you want to measure when the head is still on? So if 
for example, now it's still on. When the head is still on, you just measure the diameter from the inside of the hoop to the inside of the hoop. And I have 22 inches, so that's the size of head I'm going to need. Don't measure from the outside of the hoop to the outside of the hoop because it'll give you a strange, odd uh, number. And then you'll go to the music store and you'll ask for a 23 and 3 quarters inch head and they'll tell you that they don't have one, obviously. So anyway, here we are, shiny new drum head. This is a uh, this is a two ply head, which means that it has two layers of plastic, and conveniently it also comes with one of these. This is called an impact dot. Some heads don't come with them. Uh, if your head didn't come with one, then you should um, well you, when you go to the store you should find out whether the head's going to come with one or not. But if it doesn't come with one, then you should probably pick one up. We're going to put this eventually right in right on the head at the exact point at which the mallet from the pedal comes in contact with the drum. Uh, it'll increase your contact sound and it'll make your bass drum sound better and also it'll increase the um, longevity, the lifespan of the new head by a factor of about five, which is great. You like that, don't you? <laughs> awesome. So, just gonna, just so that it looks nice, I mean this isn't really necessary, but just so that it looks nice, the top of my drum is here obviously because that's where the stem goes to hold the tom. So I'm actually going to center my logo in between these two lugs so that the logo looks nice and slick. And then I'm just going to remove the rim from the previous head and I'm going to put it back in place. Once again, my marker is there and there. So I'm putting it back in in exactly the same place. And then I'm going to tighten these down. Incidentally, it's actually also a good practice to try, if you can, to have these lug bolts end up going back into the same spot that they were in. As you can see, you can move them around, you can take them right off. But it is nice to put them back exactly the way they were, particularly if you were already happy with the way the drum was working and behaving before the incident took place that broke the head. So we're just firing these back into place. want to come in a little bit closer and have a look at the head, what you'll be able to see, depending, you can walk around and try to figure out what the best angle is with light refraction, but you can see that I've got wrinkles here and there. So eventually I'm going to want to try to eliminate those by governing the tension. I'm only going to tighten it about as tight as necessary in order to eliminate all the wrinkles. So once again, standard operating procedure for this is to go across and then over to the next one, and then across, and then over to the next one, and then across, and then over to the next one, and then across. And like I said, I'm only tightening it just enough to make sure that there aren't any super visible wrinkles. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is called cracking the head or seating the head which is essentially I'm going to put a bunch of pressure in the middle of it in order to make sure that the two plies separate so they're not stuck together but they're actually able to move independently of one another and that'll make the drums sound nicer so you can hear the cracking sound. Sometimes if you're, um, like, if you're not strong enough to push on you can actually put your knee on it and put a fair amount of your body weight on the drum and then that's going to sound pretty good but we'll tighten it up a little bit more just to be safe and once I've tightened it what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sort of just take my elbow I'm wearing a long sleeve outfit right now so I'm taking my elbow and just going around pushing around like this and making sure that I don't have any wrinkles in the head and that sounds all right it's gonna sound pretty good so now on to installing the impact dot. Um, this is why we have a rag. If you're installing an impact dot on a head that you already have, then it's really important to do this. Uh, since this head is new, it's not super, super important, but um, in terms of like washing the head and cleaning the head, you do want the head to be really clean so that the adhesive ends up staying on the head. So the head is new. As you can see, I've already marked up the center of it with fingerprints, so I'm just gonna scrub those away. Um, 
If you're installing this on a head that you had already and you think that the head might be dirty, then you should probably use water and soap and then a little bit of water and then let it dry and then give it another wipe once it is dry and then wait a few minutes and then put it on. But, um, we're good to go, it's perfectly clean. So we're gonna flip it back down. We're gonna put our struts back down here. If you wanna gather and um, come in for just a second here. You can see there's actually a line marked on this part and there's a line marked on that part. So that's kind of an easy uh, foolproof method to make sure that it's gonna be in the right place. Um, you can see that the strut's pointing slightly forward and that's good because as you play the drum, you're driving the drum forward and this will push back in order to make sure that the drum set doesn't run away from you as you're playing it. So the same thing over here that, as I did over there. Now my struts are in place and I'm gonna put the pedal back into place. I'm gonna make absolutely sure that I'm already okay with how high my mallet is set. If you wanna come and look in from this angle, you can see that with the way the mallet is set right now, um, there's a little bit of it sticking out the bottom, but it's not critical. Now, if I were to take my drum key and loosen this and put it out like that, that's a problem because now that's gonna scrape on there and ultimately cut a hole through the head and that's the problem that we're trying to fix today so we're not gonna create that problem again. So you can have it all the way out there if you want or you can have it down a little bit further depending on how much sort of you know leverage you wanna have and how much, uh, like essentially how heavy you want the, um, the mallet to feel as you're playing it. The further out you have it, the more heavy it will feel to play. And then I'm going to take my impact dot and I'm going to remove the uh, paper from the back of it, if I can. Of course, they make these things so easy to open. I've almost got it. And there we are. I'm trying to touch as little of the adhesive as possible. Now I'm actually going to put the dot against the mallet because I've already decided where the mallet's going to be and I'm going to push the mallet right in, make sure that the mallet is centered, double check that it looks nice, and then force it on like that. And then I'll take, um, I'll take my rag, and I'm just gonna push from the center to the outside, like that, in order to make sure that it's fastened into place. And this head is now gonna last a long time. It sounds pretty good as well. Thanks very much for watching. Have a good day.